Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. As you know, the UNHRC 49 session will get underway in Geneva from tomorrow onwards. This Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, Sri Lanka's Human Rights Matter will be again taken up for debate. And tomorrow, the High Commissioner of Human Rights, uh, Michelle Bachelet, will present her report. And there, she's ex expected to talk about Sri Lanka. So, so it's close to the Minister of Foreign Affairs tells me that her views towards Sri Lanka are much more positive this time around. as She has accepted more steps taken by Sri Lanka on the human rights front. Now, despite that, I would still like to hear it from the horse's mouth itself. Mainly because we all know how substantial the LTT funds are active in Geneva and from now until the time she delivers her remarks, who knows what will happen. Foreign Minister Professor GLP will lead the Sri Lanka delegation in Geneva and is expected to do the needful in making Sri Lanka's case there. Now, one of the things that we all need to be uh, on the lookout for is this uh, new Sri Lanka Accountability Project, which aims to find information and report back to the UNHRC on the progress made in the 13 articles set out by the Resolution 46-1. But unfortunately, we don't know how much of a role this office will play in the upcoming sessions. The uh, UNHRC is going after accountability for people who they say committed war crimes during the final phase of the war. They say this would eventually help the Tamil people in Sri Lanka to find solace and comfort and closure. Really? That's what would bring them relief? If this is all done for the betterment of the Tamil people, how were they treated during the past 13 years since the war ended? Once again, here is Dhanidu Itanwasa. The northern province is home to 3,570 villages in which a population of over 1.2 million people resides. One of the key policy decisions undertaken during the post-conflict period in Sri Lanka was the Northern Spring, also known as Uttruvasanthe, an eastern revival program, also known as Naganehira Navodya. From 2006 to 2012, Sri Lanka spent over 425 billion rupees for the reconstruction and development of the northern and eastern provinces. The government held provincial elections for the Eastern Province Council in March 2008, after a lapse of 14 years, and since then a massive development has taken place. The poverty head count index for Trincomalee declined from 11.7% in 2009 to 10% in 2016. The poverty head count index of the Batikalo district has decreased from 20.3% in 2009 to 11.3% in 2016. In 2012, approximately 179,676 individuals were in poverty in the eastern province, and this amount drastically declined to 118,061 in 2016. Latest figures released by the Eastern Provincial Council shows that over 93% of the population in the region is employed. The district of Jaffna had massive reductions in poverty levels from 2000 onwards, where it was once at 12.4% in 2009, dropping to 6% in 2016. Jaffna as a district displays one of the lowest figures of those not attending school, which ranges at about 1%, as opposed to a country average of close to 5%. Apart from the distinctive culture of Jaffna and its famous Nalur festival that attracts over a million people a year, almost 92% of the people, being Hindus, adds to the rituals and norms that goes with regards to art, music, dance, painting and the overall feel of the city. Under the Ministry of Development within the current administration, alone, a number of key infrastructure projects have been initiated and completed under the current administration as well. Over 1.39 billion rupees has been spent on currently completed projects under the guidance of the UDA, and multiple projects have already been initiated, primarily focused on the development of infrastructure in the northern and eastern region. Earlier this month, President Gotabi Rajpaksha opened the 17th National University of Sri Lanka in Vaunia. Now, as you can clearly see, the people on the ground is more interested in getting the best life they possibly could. They want uh, their hometown to develop their village with the best set of facilities and amenities and a future that would allow them to flourish. Okay, if that's the case, then what the heck is the UNHRC is talking about? Oh yes, I forgot. They are more interested in holding our war heroes accountable for killing their terrorist buddies and making sure that we somehow pay for it. When the US troops defecated on Afghanistan and pretty much ruined their country for 10 years and handed it back to the same captors, the Taliban, the United Nations within weeks came with a relief package of $5 billion. Soon after their U.S. buddies left, the U.N. didn't waste any time and launched an appeal to raise $5 billion in aid for Afghanistan. 
And that's all good. After all, we need to help the Afghan people. Okay, this means when Sri Lanka fought one of the world's ruthless terrorists and launched a humanitarian mission to rescue innocent Tamils from the clutches of the LTTE, I'm sure the UN came with a humongous relief aid package for Sri Lanka to develop the nation, right? Wrong. The only thing the UN has done thus far for Sri Lanka is to slap one resolution after the next. In fact, the very first resolution came eight days after we won the war. That's how the UN has been treating this country. Something for all liberal duck nuts to keep in mind when they go watch the rare end of the Western goons. Now let's understand the real needs of the Tamil people. Joining me now is the governor of the northern province of Sri Lanka, Governor Jeevan Thiagaraja. Thank you very much, sir, for joining me. Now, there is a calculated effort, Governor, by the LTT sympathizing diaspora to create a false narrative on the world stage in Sri Lanka, and, um, in Sri Lanka and, and also uh, everywhere else, that Sri Lankan Tamils are treated like second-class citizens and deprived by the Sinhalese majority for a good life in this country. Even politicians like the Tamil National Alliance are alluding to that fact. What's the truth to this, sir? Is that how citizens in your province feel? Okay, let me respond in the following manner. The job of the governor or the 40,000 provincial employees or the 10,000 central agency employees uh, is not to discriminate. Our job is to deliver. So when we deliver, we are not excluding anybody, mm -hmm. we are including everybody. And we respond to the real re development needs, essential requirements and the safety and the security of every single citizen who lives in the province or comes into the province. And fundamentally, the word discrimination is not in our vocabulary. If anybody were to discriminate, they'll be punished. That's all. That's the bottom line. Governor, this time around another push has been made in Geneva to bring in another resolution. That's what we are hearing from there by uh, the said LTT sympathizing diaspora backed uh, by governments uh, who, who are very sympathetic to their cause. Uh, is this helping to create a better life for Sri Lankan Tamils here? I take a slightly different view with no disrespect to the UN. I have a long association with their systems and mechanisms and bluntly put what matters for people is delivery on the ground. Resolutions alone don't deliver, action does. And I'll give you a classic example. Today, there were two. The, His Excellency the President had called a meeting of all the governors and he spelled out the need for very responsive public service, uh, keeping a careful eye on cost of living, production, agriculture, inputs, uh, so on and so forth. So essentially ensuring the welfare of the citizens. That's at one level. Secondly, i give you another example. Today, people do come and protest in front of the office of the governor. Uh, a group of people protesting today in the afternoon, and as we speak now, and their demand is about four, fam four persons charged under the PTA in prison for various allegations. The response is, and I'll tell you this is what I mean by deliveries, yes, give us your details. We'll check the next court, next court date. We'll check to see what the charge is. We will approach the police station that filed the report, and then we'll provide a feedback to the family. So here, what I'm basically saying is, any and every need, irrespective of who, we take seriously, and we do our very best to deliver within the legal framework. And this will be true for anything and everything that have concerns the citizens of the Northern Province. Anything and everything, I'd like to emphasize. Indeed. Uh, Governor, I'm very curious to know, uh, what are the needs right now in your province? Like in most other places, children, parents want good education for children. Children want education for jobs. They want cash in hand. Adults want a decent life. People look for shelter. They want to ensure that health care is available, that they have mobility, they have freedom to travel, they have the means to travel. They have other opportunities in markets, that there is safety, security, law and order, uh, where there is a claim on land, access to land, uh, credit facilities, banking services. This is what people want. Indeed. Uh, we have to leave it at that, Governor of the Northern Province, Jivan Thiagaraja. Thank you very much, sir, for joining.
Let's take a short commercial break and when we return, hopefully, we will have electricity. This is State of the Nation. Back in a moment.